thinking of you see today um to mark uh, mark uh, so a simple question at what point did youtube move away from your national culture well? sorry what what's that I don't think it was a motivation, it was just a situation I was put into and I saw opportunity for my future, for my family going forward and yeah, I took that opportunity. Thanks Nathan, so here. Um, Mark, just uh, looking forward to the, to the Indian series, uh, just uh, what, how, how crucial is this uh, in terms of building, building up to the, um, to the World Cup and, uh, and Obviously, this would you expect to to get Mumbai Indians questions uh, coming coming your way in press conference in India? Okay, first of all, Mumbai Indians questions. Um, I'm under contractual obligations by CSA and Mumbai Indians that I don't want to and I don't have to answer any questions. Okay, but this press conference is about um, the Proteas and heading off to India. First of all, is going to be a, a massive tour for us. Um, yes, it's, it's basically the, the tour before the big event, which is the World Cup. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a massive tour for us. And hopefully we get to, to see a couple of options and, and give opportunities to players uh, who we feel uh, are going to play a massive role for us in the World Cup as well. So yeah, it, it's competitive cricket, which I think is good. I think we're going to be game fit going into World Cup, especially playing against India. Um, albeit in India conditions, but I, I think we... We've got a, a squad and a good leadership group with the knowledge that we're going to have to play a different brand of cricket going to Australia. So we're going to have to mix that a little bit um, and make sure that we are ready for, for a very important World Cup for us. Thanks, Sahir. So the Cecil, then Johan. Hi, Mark. Uh, thanks, Lucy. Uh, Mark, how difficult or easy was it to make the decision to leave a team that you've invested your time in for the last uh, three years? Uh, considering the, the off-field battles as well and considering that you know you would have taken this team to the World Cup next year um, how difficult or how hard was it and and where, what what is your thought process regarding this coming T20 World Cup in terms of keeping the players motivated knowing full well that you're not going to be part of this journey any longer okay firstly as I said I'm under contractual obligations with CSA and with Mumbai Indians. Um, so I, I'm not going to comment on that. It's going to be very easy for me to keep the focus of the players. Um, I'm 100% committed to the players and to, to the Proteas going into a World Cup. It's a massive World Cup for us and I'm really looking forward to it. Um, and I know the players are looking forward to it as well. If you have a look at our squad, it's, I think it's a very strong squad as well. Uh, and there's a massive opportunity for us um, that you know, potentially if we play good cricket, um, I believe that we got the players to, you know, you can't guarantee a World Cup win or anything like that, but I think we got the players to, to really push for, for a great outcome in the World Cups. And I remain 100% committed to this team. Um, my decisions from a personal perspective, uh, it's not going to hamper these guys at all. I've always said that, you know, I'm, I'm in this job for the players and the players alone, um, and I will continue to give them everything that I have in order to, to try to get the best outcome for them in a World Cup. Thanks, Johan. Uh, morning, Mark. I um, just want to double check. The guys who went to Caribbean Premier League, are they joining later or are they already with you guys? The whole squad that's going to the World Cup um, and India is with us at the moment. So they're all together. We're on a, almost a, a, like a two-day camp. I wouldn't call it a camp because there's, there's not much going on. It's just uh, everyone getting back together. I mean, there were quite a few guys that were at different parts of the world. Guys were at um, Caribbean League and all that type of stuff in South Africa. And we just brought everyone together um, at the moment just to really just kind of reconnect um, before we go out. Um, so, yeah, uh, we've, got a, we've got a nice little function uh, that the guys are going to be involved in tonight. Uh, it's, all, it's all about the team uh, as a unit and just bonding together before we head out uh, on Friday. Um, Cape Town-ish, if you want to call it that. We're out in the Pole Valleys. Thanks, Johan. And um, yeah, then we'll go to Ken then later. Uh, good morning, good morning, Mark, and thank you for the opportunity. Um, Mark, as a, 
Germany is fighting for as a national sport, we always seem to be the subject of a major talking point, unknowingly most of the time, right before a big tournament. This time around, it's uh, regarding our T20 captain, Kemba, who went unsold at the SA auction. Um, and there's been a lot of fallout or discussion, debate, if you want to call it that, about that. Could you give us your thoughts on that and whether it could affect the energy within the group, if at all, going into such an important period of cricket for us over the next couple of months? Okay, cool. First of all, I'm not involved in that. Unfortunately, I wasn't involved in, in that whole auction or, or not involved in the coaching of any, any one of those teams. Um, but one thing I can say is that leagues, they come and go and they, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in full understanding and respect of this new league that's come up about in South African cricket. I think it's needed and all that type of stuff. But let's separate the national team from the league. Timber Vuvuma is our leader, okay, and I back him 100%. Um, yes, there's a lot of talk in social media and all that type of stuff about you know this and that. I don't really care, to be honest with you. Um, he's, he's our leader and we back him in this team like you can't believe. The guys were there last night, we were having a couple of um, uh, drinks and, you know, and I could just see the energy around him because I understand the situation that he's going through. Um, bottom line is, we are on a journey and we've been on a journey for the last two years. He's been a massive part of our journey and we back him like you can't believe. Um, what happens in leagues and, and, and auctions and stuff, you can't control that. Unfortunately, it, it is what it is. Um, but from a, from a pro tier perspective, we do back him 100% and going into a massive tournament like a World Cup, he will be a massive part of our team going forward. And as a coach, I back him 100%. Simple as that. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, Amir. Ken, later. Thanks, you uh, see, how's it, Mark? Um, Mark, you touched briefly on conditions in India compared to what you get going to get in Australia. Um, is it as simple, though, saying that a flat pitch is a flat pitch wherever it is in the world? Or if you get good batting conditions in India, are there still different things you have to do to if you get the same sort of batting friendly conditions in Australia? Yeah, look, I think it's we, we've got to be mindful of the conditions that we're going to be playing in. Um, I think it's, it's more about not giving too many cards out, um, especially in India because they're in our pool as well. Uh, so we're going to have to meet up with them at some stage. Um, so, I mean, there's quite a few games that we're playing against them. The, the venues that we're going to, we're not quite sure what we're going to get. I think at the back of our minds is always going to be that there's a World Cup ahead of us. So we've got to look at combinations uh, and, and giving guys opportunities to, you know, to keep them in touch with, with form and all that type of stuff. So I think it's a... It's a balancing act to, to give opportunities, see different combinations, try to get a bit of confidence going into the World Cup as well, but also understanding that the conditions are probably going to be completely different to, to what we experience in India as well. So I'm going to rely on, on our coaching staff um, to, to give us some good advice uh, on, our, on our strength and conditioning coach as well to, to give us some good advice on, on resting players, all that type of stuff. So expect, don't expect our, our full front team to come out. Um, we'll probably give opportunities to guys um, in, in the next two, three weeks that we feel is, a, is, is all in order to build up for, for World Cup, which I think is a smart way to handle our whole squad. Thanks, Ken. Later. Hello, Lucy. Thank you. Hi, Mark. Mark, just um, on that building confidence, um, I mean, the team has been on a leafy patch um, with regards to limited overs cricket um, for the last couple of, couple of tours. Um, just uh, how do you balance going to India, um, possibly losing there and trying to get up there, or winning in India and going to the World Cup on a high? How do you balance those expectations um, within the team and, and also within the um, supporters around the team? Okay, first of all, I don't understand what your leafy patch is about. Um, if you have a look at our stats, especially in T20 cricket, we're the most successful T20 side over the last 25, 30 games. Okay? Uh, one day cricket, we've had a bit of a mixed bag because we've lost players at crucial times in series to, to IPL and all that type of stuff, which is uncontrollable. So we haven't always been able to have our best players playing in certain uh, competitions and, and series and, and games that we've actually needed. That's why we are in a situation where we are at the moment, 
uh, regarding qualification. Okay, um, but in saying that, this this white ball team has got a lot of special players, um, and I've got full confidence that when we go to India, we've got a lot of ammo um, in in our squad to to really go out there and put them on the table and say, listen, you guys go out and play, and that they will be world beaters. But it's just the balance of of trying to work out how do we get everyone involved and get them ready for a big big event which is a world cup so as i said before i know everyone wants to see our, our full world cup team playing um, but we've got three t20 games and three one day games available to us where we need to give guys opportunities to get them in form keep them ready and fit the main focus will be on the world cup with regards to our selection and to the the way and style that we are but that we're going to play Um, thanks, Lucy. Um, hi, Mark. Hope you're well. Um, obviously, just like you mentioned, you know, there's a there's a huge opportunity for other guys to stay be playing now in this um, series. But I just wanted to hear just how big a loss is Rusty van der Dusen. I mean, this is uh, uh, this is a guy that's averaged in excess of sixty and only high, so he still does leave a huge hole. Yeah, he does, and it's very unfortunate uh, for Rusty. I mean, he's been a He's, a, he's been a guy that we've invested in, in all formats, uh, for, for quite some time now. So to lose Rusty is a massive blow to the squad. Fortunately for us, um, and I said this at the, end of, at the end of the England series as well, there are guys that have been pushing uh, for selection. And you know we've, we've got a couple of guys back into our system as well, which has strengthened the whole unit. Um, and the competition is, is massive in our, in our squad. So that's been the plus. But yes, you're right, uh, losing Rusty just his whole aura around the team environment and that is a massive blow for us. But you, you know what, uh, you know, things like this happen, injuries in sport happen, and unfortunately for Rusty, I mean, you know, hopefully, you know, I, know for, I know for a fact Rusty will be on the phone and trying to give his input and, and, and uh, you know, be, be a team man that he is. Um, he'll be there with us uh, throughout the whole way. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, he's not available. So we just got to, it is what it is. We've got to move on and we've got to try to replace him as best as we can. Um, and that's what we've, we've done with our selection as well. Thanks. So, uh, Hi, uh, thanks, Lucy. Uh, Mark Boucher, hi. Uh, Stuart Gamer here. I want to check here as uh, when South Africa playing limited overs have won more matches than India. So does this mean, uh, uh, do you have an advantage to India? There's no advantage to India. I think that we're going into their conditions. So straight away, India are a very good one-day team. I'm not too sure what team they're going to put up. I know that they've got plans to take their T20 side to the World Cup. So we might play uh, an understrength Indian team in the one-days. Um, but any team that India put up in... In, in India is going to be a strong unit. I mean, they've got a lot of depth. Um, we know that. So we're going to have to be on top of our game. But as I said before, I think the one day series that we're going to be playing, obviously we want results and we want to win. But everything with regards to that Indian tour will be bearing in mind that we have got a World Cup ahead of us. So if it's resting players or giving opportunities to players, I, I see the squad that we're going with, maybe 19, 20 players. Um, I don't see like a, a T20 squad or one day squad. I, I look at opportunities um, through our 20 individuals that, that we just need to manage and get them in the best space for, for a World Cup. Thanks. The last few questions from Amir. So here, then we're going to wrap with Morgan. Uh, thank you. Um, I put the uh, World Cup up essentially on the other side of this uh, limited overs tour in India. Um, would would that give you a fair idea of who your starting eleven would be? I know you mentioned uh, giving guys uh, opportunity to play, finding form, uh, looking at combinations. Would the series give you a fair idea of who starts in that first game, or do you more or less have an idea who that might be? I've I've got an idea. Um, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to to look at the makeup of our squad, and and you guys could probably work out who 
you know, potentially our starting nine or ten players would be. I think there's always a bit of form that you've got to look into and look at one or two players and go like, okay, well, you know, maybe they're, they're not in form or they're in form and, and give the spot to them. But I think basically, I mean, our starting 11 in a World Cup, we've probably got nine spots or ten spots that we know what our strongest um, 11 or 10 will be, uh, given looking at conditions and all that type of stuff. That's the nice thing about the squad. This squad has, has been together for a long time. There's continuity. They've, a lot of these guys have been to a World Cup before. We've got some exciting new talent that don't carry the scars of the past, all that type of stuff. And they're exciting prospects for us going into a, a new World Cup. Um, but yeah, we, we believe that going to Australia, there's different conditions that you, you're going to play in. And we can look at the conditions and choose a squad or choose a team or 11 that uh, can compete in, in any conditions in Australia. And I think that's quite exciting in itself. Thanks, Amir. Uh, so here, yeah, then Morgan for the last one. Mark, uh, we do know the, uh, over the years the influence of uh, the former president and Nelson Mandela on, the, on, the, on sports teams in South Africa. You guys uh, visited Robin Island yesterday. Just uh, in terms of uh, what was that like for the boys and, and yourself and, and what do you take from that, uh, you know, just heading into the next couple of big months? I've been there twice already, so this is my third time that I've been there, and uh, we actually had a hell of a guide who was has been there for a long time, and, and yeah, the insight that we had was incredible. Um, you know, I, I walked around, and as a coach, you look at the guys and you just watch them and ex and see the experience that they went through yesterday. It's all a part of our journey, um, a part of our team culture that we've created, and it was yeah, it was eye opening for a lot of the guys. Um, so I've got no doubt that that little trip that we did yesterday, albeit sometimes quite a simple thing to do, is going to be far reaching going into the depths of building a culture and especially when we're under pressure because every team is going to be under pressure at the World Cup. I think that could, that could have a, a massive input into our results. That was special. Thank you. Now, just a couple of questions ago. What are your thoughts on the rise of Tristan Stubbs over the last 11 months? He, he was a total unknown about a year ago, and now he's the talk of this town. I think what you said there is great. He's a total unknown. So a lot of, a lot, lot of teams probably don't know what he's all about, which makes him dangerous. Um, I mean, we, we know in South Africa the, the things that he's done here, albeit at domestic level, and he's had a, a little bit of a, a go in international crickets. We didn't rush him into any selections. I mean, in India, he was there. We, we sort of tried to groom, in, groom him into a spot. Um, but then he got to England on the biggest stage against a very good England team. And he showed us what he can actually do. So he's an exciting prospect, but he's a prospect that not many teams know about, which is exciting. Uh, I think that's why, you know, if he gets a, an op a opportunity to play, um, great. We've got other guys who we can pick as well. But if he gets the opportunity to play, I think he's going to make a massive impact impact uh, on on this tournament and and also in India.